I want to read two familiar texts, reading them from the NIV version so that you know I can read, just in case you're in a different version. Psalm 34 says this. Psalm 34, 1 to 4, and then Psalm 103, 1 to 6. Psalm 34 says, I will extol, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Exalt, uh, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. Psalm 103 verses 1 to 6 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases? The emphasis will be on the last verses. Who redeems your life from the pit? and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles final verse the lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed so far the scripture Father, bless your word afresh. May it come alive again in our spirit. Open our hearts to be receptive, our ears to hear, our mind to comprehend, and a zealousness to live it in Jesus' name that the body of Christ say. Amen. As you take your seats, before you do that, you need to do something quickly. A couple of things, a matter of fact. I need you to repeat these words. It works for me. It works for me. Look at somebody and tell them, praise works for me. Now look down your row and make sure that you have a person that is in agreement with you that understands you have praisers in your row. Check them out quickly. Look down the row. You can always recognize a praiser. They are electrifying in their smile. Their presence as they come in, they say hello. They don't just sit and take a seat and not say good evening and good afternoon. Unmannerly people do that. Non-praisers do that. Look down your row and say, I'm checking out your praise tonight. <laughs> Tell them you better, your praise better be intact. Tell them your praise better be intact. Take your seats. Hallelujah. My assignment tonight is to bring you what might be classified and consistent to some and inconsistent to others and simple to some and not simple to others is to remind you of these simple words it works for me some people attend particular denomination churches that they feel is the church of their choice they will go to a church if you will where it's much more quiet there is less movement you come in, you bow, you take a seat. The priest talks, the person bows at the altar, shows you his back, turns around, shows you his front, turns around, hands you a couple of things and maybe, and then he disappears through some side door and you don't see him to the next service. That's their choice. I'm not going to knock them. Some people enjoy where the quietness exists. They think that what we do here is a little too loud for them. That's their choice. They are boring people in this world. And then there are people who have life and joy and understand what it is to live life more abundantly. I thought you'll get that immediately. I tell folks all the time, you hang around me, please do not be boring. And don't get so religious that you can't just bring it down just a little bit. Anybody in agreement with me? 
I like real people. Look at your neighbor and say, I like real people. I like folks, don't give me this way because I'm the bishop. Hey, bishop, how are you? Amen, hallelujah. And so you're fake, hashtag fake. I want you to be the same way all the time. Now, while some things work for some folks and quiet and tranquil, there are others of us who could never attend those types of worship on a consistent basis. I could never belong to that church, especially if they told me what I could and could not wear. I could not belong to those churches that told, tell me I couldn't put on my sneakers when I felt like wearing my trainers. I couldn't belong to those churches that would tell me I couldn't wear jewelry because they would have thrown me out long time ago. Because none of these items get in the way of my worship unto God. These are the things that enhance us here on earth. These are the things that help us along the journey. I'm not knocking any denomination, please. That's far from my means of, of nature. What I am saying is that might work for them. But I need to understand the nature and the environment that works for what I understand my God is, who is deserving of every praise that I give him. The nature of life, if you will, is that trouble and praise don't normally mix. Most folks cannot understand how praise and trouble are actually cousins with each other. But the nature of life is that trouble will always be amongst joy. You will always have joy in the midst of trouble. And trouble will always, at some point, look for joy. How can you turn your eyes to God and sing his praises when life is hard? How can you actually find that you can give him thanks when things are not working out? It is because what is happening has nothing to do with my praise to my God. My praise to my God and my worship is not contingent upon how things are happening in my life. It's dangerous. Remember I told you, it's dangerous when people act fake. You must be the same way all the time. It's called, I love God in spite of and regardless of. God and I are in relationship. That has nothing to do with what is working out and what is not working out. Why would anybody in their right mind resort to a tactic that doesn't seem like it makes sense when it comes to praising God? There must be another strategy one could consider. Where do you find words of praise and thanksgiving when your heart is full of sorrow and your heart is full of struggle? You find it when your relationship is so intact and non-contingent to what is happening in your life. When you have a relationship with husband and wife's best scenario, I can be upset and disturbed, but because my love is beyond the moment of which we might not be in agreement, you find that place to smile. You find that place to enjoy. You understand that God is beyond where you are currently. How is it that an act to exhibit that would aid in the calming of my physical trouble is something spiritual? How is it that what I do in praise is connected to what I do and don't do in the physical? Because in Psalm 34, David reminds us, that we should praise God through the good times and the bad times. Praise should fill our hearts every day, no matter our circumstance, especially when we are walking through the season of great trial. You should sing more when hell is breaking loose. Even if you can't sing in the praise team and the choir, sing by the word of God. You should rejoice more when things are not working out because that would help you get to the place of working it out. You see, praising God in storms, through the battles, and when life gets hard is a choice 
And you and I must understand that when you feel surrounded, fight your battle with your praise. When you feel like it's more than you can handle, fight your battle with your praise. When you don't know what to say and how to say it and you don't feel really like doing certain things, you must always find the praise in your soul. Because when the struggle begins to close in and you may find yourself without words to pray, your inability to pray should not be your inability to praise. You see, because when I don't have words, I still have a joy unspeakable and full of glory. When I don't know how to form the proper sentence, there is something bubbling on the inside that reminds me to praise God in spite of. This is why David can say the words, the Lord is. Before you add on to the is, just understand that he is saying the Lord. When he is saying the Lord, he is indicating my Adonai, my great one, my sovereign one. The one who allows me to be present and blesses me and did not have to make me born on this earth, the Lord. And then he goes further to say the Lord is, which brings God into the place of Adonai and heavens and into the presence of where physical beings are. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked rises up against me, they will stumble and fall. David would say the Lord is. He's my shepherd. I shall not want. Ah, he would say the Lord is he's my shield and my buckler the Lord is he's my Jehovah Jireh he's my Jehovah Rapha he's my Jehovah Tiskadu he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel he knows how to be the plumb line the Lord is the Lord walks on my behalf he moves on my behalf when I don't know when he's going to move he's moving when I don't know how he's going to move he's moving when it looks like he's not moving he is moving just knowing these facts causes a praise to come up in my spirit. You see, you got to understand that when we face difficult times, knowing this information will cause us to have a good response. Because my response is my choice. Hey, hey let me help you here as I set the foundation. Look at somebody and say, my response is my choice. It is my choice. It is my understanding that I choose to respond a certain way. You have the choice that when death occurs, how you are going to respond to death. You can respond by falling out and crying and rolling on the floor. Or you can respond by standing up and praising God. You can respond by tears coming down and just quiet on the side. All of these are different responses and different choices. But as strange as it may sound, learning to praise God during our difficult times can give us peace. Learning to praise God during difficult times can give us hope and invites God right into the situation. Because the enemy sits back and tries to figure out, why haven't you lost your mind? Why haven't you quit Siloam? Why haven't you left by now and things have not worked out? It's because I know more information than he's willing to accept that I know. I understand that I have a relationship with my God that has nothing to do with what is technically going on in the bad of my life. I love my God in spite of. I love my God when it works and when it does not work. I love my God when he shows up and when it looks like he's not showing up. Why? It is a choice that I've made. It is my choosing between two or more possibilities I either choose to worship and praise him or I choose not to worship and praise him it makes a whole lot more sense to choose to bless God and be at peace with God until God decides how he wants to do something 
You see, when I come into the house of God, I understand how the psalmist said these words. Look at me, as a matter of fact, carefully in Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord. Woo! Did you hear what it just said? I will. He made a conscientious choice to bless God. God. It wasn't that nothing, that things weren't happening in his life. It wasn't that he didn't have some challenges. If you study the history of David, a whole lot of challenges was going on in that family. Problems between the daughters, incest between the children, all types of sexual challenges are going on in David himself. But David said, I will bless the Lord. This was his remedy to his situation. Why? Because it works for him. It worked for David to understand bless the Lord at all times. It works for David to understand that praise is always a choice. Some people go to church and they understand that they go to church. I understand that they go to church for what I might call the gymnastics. Some cheap people come to church for the idea of coming in at a grand entrance. They have nowhere else to wear their clothes so they bring it to church. Some people, no believe you me, there are people that are like that. No one recognizes them anywhere else in the world but they come into the church because they feel this is the place of recognition for them there are people who come to the church for a myriad a myriad amount of reasons some people go through hard times and they rely on liquor no don't get so quiet now some people go through hard times and they rely on drugs some people go through hard times and they make a choice of weed don't act like you don't know what that is. Some, some people make a hard choice and they need to calm their nerves as they say. They need to resort to exercise for others or riding bicycles. These are all choices. I've decided that out of all the choices I could make and I could resort to, I decided something works for me called praise. Praise is always a choice. Even in difficult times, we can choose to praise God. I can choose to allow fear and worry to control my heart. I can choose to let fear and worry consume my mind. I can choose to allow fear and worry to disturb my praise. Instead, I choose to praise God. God and confess that by praising God he is in control I made the choice that when I praise God I also tell myself he is running the show I tell myself during the praise that he is still sovereign because lifting our voice amid difficult times is not always easy but I repeat deliberately it's my choice when I choose to praise God at least three of many things happen when I make the choice to praise God I move a praise and that helps my focus to move from me to God my praise takes my mind off of what I'm going through at the moment because now I am thinking about the God who in the midst of going through he is sustaining me now I am praising him that when I wanted 10,000 5,000 came I got to handle things with 5,000 and as soon as 5,000 was going down I saw him come with something else and blessed another 2,000 and then when something was going down and I thought I was about to go to zero he came in again because I was praising and bless me again the more I find myself praising is the more I am taking my focus off of my problems this is why when you come to the house of God you cannot afford to just sit next to any and anybody you cannot afford to sit next to stiff-necked folks 
You cannot afford to sit next to people who look like they have no agility whatsoever. You makes me wonder sometimes, how in the world are you married and you look like you can't even move? Figure that out later on when you go home. You can't afford that. When you are a praiser and you make that type of choice, you look for other people who are around that can praise like you do. I don't want to sit in the house of God and you are focused more on your problem than you are focused on the reason why you came into the house of God. You came into the house of God to get relief from your problem. You came into the house of God to feel the burdens come off of your shoulders. You came into the house of God to throw up your hands even when you didn't want to throw up your hands. But just his presence alone automatically caused you to forget about your problem and praise the Lord. Look down your row and say, let me check out my row. Sit down for a minute, I got a few more ways to go. You see the text says in Psalm 42 and 11, why am I so depressed? Why this turmoil within me? No, 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 we're not going to do this. We're not having a pity party here. No, I'm not getting dressed to come out to church, to then come to church and have a pity party. I left the house depressed, and then I'm going to come into the church and still sit depressed because you're looking for somebody that is going to be all right. No, no, I don't need that. I got to learn how to encourage myself. I got to learn how to let myself know this is some hard situation, but I've come in here to put my hope in God. I will praise him because he's my savior. I will praise him because he's my God. Somebody shout, praise works for me. You got to know that praise works for you. You got to know that praise is the remedy given to us. Here's another one. Praise reminds us that God is in control. Praise reminds us that God is not only in control, is still in control. God is never surprised by the things that come into our life. It doesn't surprise God when somebody decides to walk out of your life. It's not all of a sudden God didn't know this was happening and what was coming down the road. No, God was fully aware that what you picked up was no good. God was fully aware, even though mama said leave him, you kept going. God was fully aware that this was going to be a wreck down the aisle. But God also knew that if he can get some spirit of praise in your life and have the right people around you, you would be able to get back up on your feet even after the things have gone awry why because praise reminds you God is in control when we praise God in difficult times we are reminded that our heavenly father is not only aware of our situation but that he is running the situation he not only cares but he promises to strengthen he not only cares but he promises to help he not only cares, but he promises to be with us, never leave us, and never forsake us. Do you realize that when he makes that comment, it also has to do with when we make the wrong decisions. When we do the wrong thing, when we go in the wrong direction, when we do things that he said and he says that I do the opposite to what he said, he is still never leaving us, never forsaking us. You are a mess, but he shows up anyway. You do the wrong thing, but he shows up anyway. You should have been killed, but God shows up anyway. You walk out from your parents and you think you can be on your own and God still shows up anyway you're looking like you don't know what I'm talking about you remember the prodigal son he told the father give me everything that belongs to me first of all I would have told him it has your name on it but it's not yours yet that's my response because you might be the inheritor because you have my name but I still run the show as the head of the estate 
So I determine when and when you will receive what you believe belongs to you. But the story is so powerful because the father gives him what is supposed to go to him. He squanders everything. He runs the street. He runs into prostitutes. He does and live a life of a beggar at the end of the day. He says, my father has servants that lives better than me. And look at what has become of me. God never left that boy. God was still with that boy. God was walking with that boy. God was making sure that boy fed and when he got hungry. God was with him when he was in the muck and in the mire. God was with him when things were not working out. God was with him when the food and the, ma and the money dried up. That the Bible says he came to his senses. He gave a choice. Why am I staying here? I'm going back to my father. I will never leave you and never forsake you. Even when you mess up, I'll be there with you. That's the God that you serve and you praise. Listen to me carefully tonight that praise ought not to be just a routine in your life. You ought not to be praising like just because everyone else is praising. You don't run this simple Simon says. You ought to praise God because of your relationship with God. You ought to come in here and bless him because you have a relationship with him. Praise is a confession of your dependence on God. When you praise and when you lift him up, you are literally putting yourself and your voice in the place that says, God, I depend on you. Lord I know what my background has been like but I also know that if I do not acknowledge you in all of my ways I would not get my pathway directed I know that I'm a mess from the beginning to the end I know that I'm not as holy as other folks that are in this church I know that I've got some struggles along the journey but I've found out that when I praise you that you are now in the and I'm now in the dependence of who you are. I understand that what this thing means that most of us need to understand that you should praise God because of what not just what God has done but because his mercy endures forever. You got to turn your heart to find praise for God who loves you and is fighting for you. Do you know what it is for God who fights for you to never sleep nor slumber? Do you know what it is that when folks say they are with you and then they disappear? You haven't had that experience before? I got you, my brother. I got your back. Probably, you know, we ace Buku and we're going to be there for each other. You turn around and look for them and they cannot be found. And don't let it be attached to the need of money. Because when it's attached to money, it really takes on a different presentation. But God says he'll fight for you and your praise will cause him to fight the more. It is your praise that will cause the heavens to open so that the angels are released on your behalf. Don't you remember Daniel? The Bible says that Daniel prayed. Daniel not only prayed, but he praised. Daniel understood that a physical presence of where he is is not going to hinder him touching his spiritual connection with his God. He understood what it was to pray and he understood what it was to praise. And in his praise with the prayer caused the angel Gabriel to be released. But before Gabriel could get there, warfare had taken place and Michael was called upon to help Gabriel get the message over to Daniel. It was praise that was going on, not just the prayer. It is all coupled with each other. There are benefits in praising God in hard times. Why? Look at your neighbor and say, God will fight for you. 
You see, when you place your full trust in God, when you stop worrying and try to fix all of your problems, when you stop worrying about what the next move would be, you allow space for God to come in and fill what you were filling with worry, now fill with hope. As you begin to sing, I need to come back to that part. As you begin to sing, whether you're in the shower singing or you're in the living room singing, there's a difference of the two with the ecosystem. But I promise you, it's not about hitting the right note. It is about the voice of God coming from your soul. You are singing praises to your God. When you sing in your praise, you watch God begin to fight on your behalf. The Lord will set an ambush to come against your enemies. The Lord will do it like he did when he got up and did an ambush as the people of God praise God. The men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir were invaded by Judah because they thought that the war was more people than what was there but it was the praise that went up it was the praise that caused it to thunder you can feel by yourself but when you get into a praise you don't feel like you're by yourself there's something about the praise that causes you to feel there are thousands of angels all around you that's why it's important important even to get to church I'm almost there in the middle it's important listen I know we're in a hybrid season I know that but it is dangerous to forget the assemblings of yourself there's something about when you walk into the house of God and you sit next to a praiser even if you are going through you pick the right person to sit next to because you know that even before the praise team starts singing sitting in this particular row at this particular time before the band even strikes up will cause the praise to let God give you victory even before the service begins look down your row and say I'm checking out my praisers let me help you here as I get ready to bring you home that God in praise will protect you. Woo! Repeat after me. My praise would cause me to be protected. God is your shelter from the storm. God is your refuge in the time of trouble. He will protect you from the battles of life. Rejoice in God who loves you. When your heart turn to God and trust God, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, the Lord will condemn. When I know that, I praise God and my praise protects me my praise in the atmosphere causes the spirit realm to back up of every demon in hell every wicked force has to back up because my praise is ordering a protection my praise is releasing the angels on my behalf my praise is causing the enemy to shake because God's listening to my praise look at somebody that says praise works for me let them ever sing for you spread your protection over them says psalm 5 and 11 the righteous will rejoice in the lord the righteous will take refuge in the lord the righteous will be upright before the lord and when my praise puts me in a protection it then creates a place of revival and a place of refreshment and a place of reigniting because when i praise god there comes a sure strength when I praise God every part of my body that was weak all of a sudden disappears why because God knows that my praise will create a refresh and a renewed spirit 
spirit in my soul. Praise can turn around even the worst day. Praise can make my heart feel light instead of heavy. Praise can cause things that wasn't working out to work out. The Lord is my strength and the Lord is my shield. My heart praises God because God helps and protects me. So a joy comes up because of the praise. I get revived when I praise. I feel like I can take on the world when I praise. I feel like there is nothing that can stop me when I praise because I've taken the focus off of me and put the focus on God. Praising God through the storms not only blesses God but will bless those that are around me praising God would cause others to be blessed praising God would cause the people in my row to experience what I'm experiencing praising God will get a breakthrough with my brother in the row if he cannot do it for himself because I I know how to praise. I open up the windows for him because I understand praise works for me. Look at somebody and tell them praise works for me. If you don't want to praise God, I cannot do anything about that. But I know that when I got to the house of God, I came with the intent to praise my God, to take my mind off of my problems, to put my focus on my God so that I can be refreshed and be renewed because praise makes your troubles seem smaller. I got to say that again. Praise makes my troubles seem smaller. Look at, through, look at somebody and say praise will make your troubles seem smaller. You come in with a big problem, but when you praise a big God, when you lift up a bigger God, when you lift up the only right God, what your problem look like no longer takes on the same perception because you look through the eyes of your God. Praise opens your eyes and see your blessing. Your problem is in front of you, but because you know how to praise, all of a sudden, you no longer see a problem. You now see a solution. Are you crazy? I am not crazy. My eyes see through God. Praising God will open your eyes to see everything that you could not see. When the prophet was in the midst of the challenge, the Bible says that he prayed and he praised. And he said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant that he will see what I see. When you're going through, not only will your praise open your eyes, but praise works for me because praise makes miracles possible. Oh yes it does. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills for whence cometh my help, knowing that my help comes from the Lord. I got a miracle coming and I got to praise him. I got a miracle on the way and I got to praise him. I got a miracle in route for my life and I got to praise him. Throw up your hand, roll it up into the atmosphere and say, here comes my miracle. Open up your mouth, say, here comes my miracle. Open up your mouth, say, here comes my miracle. How do you know it's coming? Because I got a praise in the atmosphere. My praise will trigger heaven. My praise will trigger God. My praise 
will cause the foundation to be rooted out from under my feet. Well, the Bible says in the book of Acts, when they came to midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing, shouting, rejoicing. Hell was breaking loose, but they were praising God. Things were not working out, but they were praising God. It didn't look like they would make it to the day, but they were praising God. And the Bible says that as they praise God, look down your row and say, suddenly. Look down your row and say, suddenly. Look behind you and say, suddenly. A movement took place. The foundation shook. The earthquake happened. The prison opened up because they praised God. I could be sick in my body, but I'm going to praise God. The diagnosis says death is coming, but the word of God says I shall live and not die. And I will declare the glory of God. I will praise him when it looks good. I will praise him when it looks bad because praise works for me. It's my remedy. It's my remedy. It's my remedy. It's my prescription. It's my drug of choice. I praise God because it works for me. I move things in the spirit through my praise. I cause the enemy to back up through my praise. Every time the enemy sees me wake up in the morning and I put my foot on the ground and last night was heavy, but because I woke up again, I get another chance to witness my God. The enemy gets upset when my hands go up and when my hands praise because I know praise works for me. Look down your row, check out your neighbor and hit five folks, tell them praise. It works for me, it works for me, it works for me, it works for me. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will forever be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted, look at your neighbor, say let the afflicted near me rejoice and praise God let them exalt his name together then the Bible says that because David was a praiser because David knew how to bless God he understood something else I sought the Lord and he heard my cry while I was yet praying I sought the Lord and he heard my cry. I sought the Lord and he heard my cry. I sought the Lord and he heard my cry. With all, all that I'm going through, I sought the Lord. Trouble on every side, but I sought the Lord. Hell breaking loose, but I sought the Lord. Children acting up, but I sought the Lord. Money acting funny, but I sought the Lord. And because I praise, and because I seek him, he heard me. Run and tell three folks he heard me. He knows my voice. He knows my praise. He knows who I am. That's why church, you don't decide how I praise God. Look at your neighbor, tell him you do not decide how I praise God. You don't get the right 
to tell me that I can lift up my hands when you say so. I bless God because I know what he's done on my behalf. I know how he's helped me when nobody showed up. I know how he's healed my body when the doctor says that this was the last night. Because of all of that, I praise my God. I said I praise my God. Open up your mouth, throw your hands into the atmosphere and praise and praise and praise.